Go. You can't see my face, but what you should know is that PBO Neon Week 4 Pick'ems are here, and we're hype about it. Don and Aiden are gonna take it away. I'll stay back here in my producer role. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Um, so first up, we got Chicago versus the Uncertain Unknowns, and um, something that should basically always be stated is that a uh, Valiant slaps. Uh, when does it not? Is is the question we should be asking? Um, and that is not one of these games. Um, it seems to have a slight four moves out syndrome, or what it like kind of wants to run, but it looks like it can counter just one v one solo this entire team. Um, if it's like boost or speed, and then it might need to set up turn or something to guarantee like a one shot or just get a little bit of chip on like Ting Hat, um, Ensign, Dragalgy, you know things like that. Um. And that Valkyrie does things. But aside from that, um, I think Iron Leaves can also do some crazy things here. Terra Fairy with booster speed. You get one SD up and it kind of just also kills the entire team. Um, Soul King of Moltres for pivoting is going to be very good here. Um, Vikavolt as well if it um, wants to Volt Switch. There's a Tinglu there, but you can kind of catch that thing with a Bug Buzz and do massive damage. Get that chip, which is going to be very much needed. Um, I think Mamoswine can can do some things here um you trailblaze once and then icicle crash and earthquake uh do do funny things as well um looking at rex's side i think that um like ting lu can can uh it kind of has to be your backbone this game um set hazards with swampert and then just kind of click like you know earthquake body press heavy slam and then like rock move. I uh, ironically I think offensive Tinglu can can do some things here. Um Zoroark is like I think specs could be pretty good. Um just get chip on everything. Maybe allow for me out of clean with like a mix of like knock flower trick. Um or even Halucha to do something. Um but I do think this is heavily in Chicago's favor. I think that he has um multiple mons that just kind of run through the entire team with even just one or two coverage moves um and so i think that uh, with that chicago probably has this um so when i look at this you said that valiant has four move slot syndrome uh looking at this team i would disagree i see one fairy resist on the other side two if you count terra and Cineroar. if valiant just throws on a specs and clicks Moonblast, it, it owes her to it KOs the entire team. Like, uh, unless Incineroar is like AV Terra Poison, everything is dying in two hits. And so basically, I think you can use Valiant early on in this game to break, and then you can clean up with, with other things like uh, Mana or Darkrai, stuff like that. Um, Iron Leaves can do similar things because it's, it's Terra Fairy. Uh, basically, I think if chicago has like a really overwhelming fairy offense into rex's team and so since the defensive backbone on unknown's team isn't particularly strong or at, at, at the very least doesn't have longevity uh it's gonna get worn down really quickly especially because fortress is the only form of hazard control okay there's also a uh, defog halucha but it's the only form of hazard control into a glamora team and a sticky web team so basically, it's going to be, there's a lot of immediate pressure coming from uh, Chicago's team. And if Incineroar has to tear up defensively to kind of mitigate a lot of these offensive options, then Rex is immediately on the back foot uh, and isn't able to, to lean into the offense that his team wants to be doing as much. Um, in terms of what he does have going, Miascarada does look very strong here. Uh, you might think Moltres is really scary at first uh, because, oh, it's Flame Body, it re it's bulky enough to resist uh, what it needs to resist from Miascarada. But Miascarada also gets Power Gem, and it's like a tech, it's like a, a common tech to use to beat Moltres. So um, that's very possible to see from it. Hatterene looks like it could do some, some decent trading in a mid game here. So, like, Rex definitely, it's not unwinnable for uncertain unknowns, but at the same time, it's definitely an uphill battle. So I think I would give this like a. 65 35 in chicago's favor maybe even 70 30. yeah i'm i'm sitting around that same range too and uh with that we move on to uh the king keldus versus the richmond raging bolts uh don't start us off with this one okay 
So we have uh, B versus uh, the the snow team in this division. Now I, I know I know B. He usually likes to uh, he, he likes he likes to be the one having the Alolan Nine Tails, but that's not what happened this season. Now if we, if we if we look at this team, it's got a lot of or if we, if we look at, we look at sorry. If we look at Richmond's team, there's a lot of really strong special offense in Duraludon, in Thunderous, in Bundle. And the special walls on B's team really aren't that great. Uh, the closest thing you have is Primarina. And it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't have reliable recovery, and it gets beaten by pretty much all of these guys, anyways. So uh, off or defensively, B is on the back foot here, I think. I think uh this is one of those rare matchups where the snow, uh, the offensive snow onslaught is really, really good. I think Metagross is going to be important in uh, kind of being an anti Alolan Ninetales Mon, anti Aspothra Mon, anti Whimsicott, maybe. Um, I don't know. Tusk is definitely has potential to snowball, although it's kind of hard when you're facing down multiple Slush Rush guys and a potential Scarf or Booster Speed bundle. I also don't know if. Tusk outspeeds Bundle at plus one. Yeah, it does, because bundle, hit, bundle hits 408 and Tusk gets 450 at plus one. So there's that. Petrant, like, honestly, it doesn't look good defensively here. But if we look at it offensively, there is no ghost resist at all. So like an offensive, like, like Nasty Plot, Shadow Ball, or like Toxic Hex kind of set could really punch some holes in this team. And then uh, Regieleki can clean up because Regieleki... We haven't said I haven't said anything about that yet. It also looks really nice here, because um, Archaladon doesn't have reliable recovery. Uh, Thunderous is a pretty free switching on it, unfortunately. But you could click Ancient Power, I guess. Um, basically, outside of those two, if those two get chipped or are just killed, then all of a sudden Regieleki looks really nice in an end game. Um, Lycanroc, Lycanroc is probably going to be really important here from B. Because a Cell Rock, Terror Rock, Cell Rock is going to be really important for the Thunderous and for the Bundle. It'll help with the Nine Tails. Close Combat's going to hit the Archalot on pretty hard. So yeah, the more I look at it offensively, the more uh, B has options. But they're a bit less automatic than the ones Richmond has available. So I think with that, I would personally give this a slight edge to Richmond Raging Bolts. Probably like 55-45. Yeah, I mean... Uh, B definitely has, like, if you dig a little deeper, it he does have some offensive options. I think you could also, like, maybe even go with, like, I don't know, Assault Vest Metagross to help kind of mitigate some of that. Castile is a pretty free typing into this team. Um, or even you could go Agility um, and try to do some things maybe with Weakness Policy, like try to catch, like, a, a Shadow Ball from an Aspothra. Um, the agility on, and then you can maybe kill with bullet punch or, or something of that sort. Um, but I will say that Lycanroc with the Terra Rock does um, do some crazy things here. Registeel can switch in, but as long as it's not like banded, then um, like it can still hit Registeel with CC, especially if it Terra normals to help try to kind of counteract the uh, the Petrant. I do think that B does have to go heavily on the offensive here um as as don said the the defensive backbone isn't super super great here um so a mix of aleki pivoting cinderace clicking pyro ball also is really really free into this team there is no resist on this team at all um arch doesn't even really count like yeah it gets stamina but how much is it taking from because cinderace could could probably be banded how much is it taking from a banded pyro ball or even a banded high jump kick. Like, that is hitting very, very hard. Um, so there's not a lot of switch-ins to that. Um, if something gets Brick Break, that should probably be bought, brought just to, like, kind of help with the Nine Tails um, in, the, in the Veil. Um, so I think B definitely has ways out of it, but Richmond definitely has the more immediate pressure um, and potential to sweep and just get through uh, B's team, especially with the lower defensive backbone. So I do think it is slightly in Richmond Raging Bolt's favor. However, I'm going to give it a 50-50, as I think B also has um, a decent few ways to try to like counter pressure. Uh, I think this will be basically just a trading match. Who, who gets more trades? 
essentially, or more value out of their Mons in the trades that they're going to get. Because I think that overall this will end up being kind of a slugfest. Um, and so with that, we move on to the Ottawa Don fans versus the Boston Bulbasaurs. And the start for Ottawa has kind of been almost uncharacteristic. Um, last season, I believe he made playoffs, was a strong contender. And this season, he starts out 0-3. Um, but I mean, looking at it, I think that Hisumi and Typhlosion can go absolutely insane here. Um, it looked insane into me, into my team last week, and it looks insane here. Scarf or Specs Eruption, um, can go insane. There is one, res two resists, okay, three total resists to Eruption. Um, however, I'm not really counting Lycanroc, and I'm not really counting Croconaw. Um, those two probably shouldn't come to the game, but I guess Lycanroc maybe could. But anyway, there's not, there's not many switch-ins to a Scarf or Specs Eruption. Um, so a lot of things are either going to get chipped or just die. Um, on the other hand, I think Quaquaval and, um... Like, Hydreigon can also be good offensively here, too, since it is Terra Steel Hydreigon. You'd have to watch out for, um, like, you know, Superpower from Enamorous, as they do like to run Physical Enamorous. Um, but I think other than that, like, Hydreigon, if it's Scarf, can just kind of click Dark Pulse or Flash Cannon, either or, and be, like, really, really free. Um, I think the defensive backbone that Ottawa has is pretty good. Um... Iron Hands and uh, Slow King Galar are are pretty good here. Iron Hands kind of has to be your um like Golden Go check because if that thing is Scarf, it can kind of just freely click Shadow Balls into the team, and there's not too much you can do about it. Um, you do have some good offensive options to like pressure it out, but if it's already in clicking Shadow Ball with Scarf, then I don't think there's much you can do. And even then, they can still click Trick if you do have something planned. So I you know watch out for that. Um, but I think uh, I think Ottawa has has ways to to beat Boston. I think um, like a DD Kiram could be a problem. Uh, Hydreigon is the one thing that's kind of standing in the way. But I I'm interested to see how much a plus one Kiram does to a Terra Steel Hydreigon, because um, I think that would be uh, interesting. I think it probably does close to fifty, depending on investment. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think I think Ottawa has the advantage if they can apply the pressure, um, cause, just because I don't think Boston has the best defensive profile. Um, so I'm going to give it probably 60-40. Uh, but Don, what do you think? Um, I think overall I agree. I think Enamorous looks actually kind of not great in this matchup because, of, because Glow King exists. Uh, especially physical Enamorous looks bad, in my opinion. Um, so I don't really think that, uh, that set at least should come. Maybe there's something you can do with Enamorous to get around Glow King. Um, Iron Hands, I think, is going to be very pivotal for Ottawa in this game. He needs to be, um, like, it, it can basically trade with whatever, it, with, with any two major threats in this matchup. Uh, it'll beat Ogre Pond 1v1, it'll beat Manaphy 1v1. If it's Assault Vest, it probably even beats Enamorous 1v1. It'll beat Kiram, and it can beat Golden Go. Like, those are, those are the guys it needs to be beating. Um, I think Quaquavel in an endgame looks really scary, uh, because it, if it gets to plus one, plus one, Golden Go, if it's offensive, won't be checking it well anymore. Uh, Manaphy just needs a little bit of chip to die to CC, I assume. Uh, if it's an offensive set anyways. And then past that, like, there's not really much that can stop it. So, I don't know, I feel like, uh, this week the offensive threats from Ottawa look really good. Um, also, we haven't mentioned it yet, but Weavile. Weavile goes kind of crazy here. Uh, outspeeding Ogre Pond and Enamorous is really nice. Uh, being able to hit Golden Go really hard. The priority is really nice into Bo uh, Boston's team. Screamtail, I think, also looks really nice here. It's like a, an, an anti Manaphy mod if, if, if it brings Roar. It's a good wish passer for stuff like Iron Hands or Hydreigon. Uh, I think like it, it could be great utility here, especially because... Um, it can be clicking things like T-Wave to slow down the other team, especially because Crocodile doesn't want to come in hard on a Screamtail. So I really feel like Ottawa's team has a big leg up here over, over Boston's team. 
because I feel like basically all of Boston's offensive pieces have fairly natural and intuitive counterplay from Ottawa, whereas uh, Ottawa's offensive pieces have very little counterplay uh, to Boston. So I, I, I'm going to give it like 60-40 in favor of Ottawa. All right. With that, on to the Dallas Dynamax versus the Kaborka Gangars. Don, go ahead. Okay, so in this team, for this team, let's just take a quick look here. I see one fairy resist, and it's not a bulky one. There's also a brand new Terra captain on Gaborka's team that I helped him pick out, and that's the Meloetta. It's Terra fairy. That thing can kind of just click, like, uh, specs Terra blast, or just Terra blast, and basically the whole team is folding to it. There's not a whole lot of counterplay available for Dallas, maybe like AV uh, Azumarill. But in that case, you can kind of just go to Corviknight or Overquill or Clefable or Water Pump. Like, there are a lot of avenues you can go down. Um, and so really, it's just, uh, there are a lot of offensive threats that Kaborka has that Dallas is struggling to deal with. Another great example here is uh, Raging Bolt. This is a rain team with no ground type. There's Terra, uh, what's it called, Araquanid? That is not an ideal answer at all. It's still taking a lot of, it, it's going to take hazard damage before it Terras. Like if Excadrill can get rocks up or Clefable. Um, and then after that, it still has to eat like a Draco or something. T-Bolt looks incredibly free from the Raging Bolt. Thunderclap is going to take care of the Swift Swimmers. Um, Walking Wake kind of just gets handled by Milotic. So I really feel like pretty much all of Dallas's offensive options just get kind of either out offensed by Kaborka's team or just get walled by some of the defensive threats. Like Chestnut, it can never ever beat Corviknight. Um, Dreadnought and Floatzel, just it's a free raging bull pretty much. Um, Walking Wake, you can go Clefable if you really want, or Milo. Uh, Water Pond in the rain is going to be a very terrifying threat. Um, what can Braviary Hisui do here? Let me take a look. It, it's, it's also going to struggle with Milotic, but honestly, maybe if it can put a lot of pressure on it, like Sheer Force Hurricanes, uh, maybe it can break through Milotic enough for Walking Lake to be a threat in the end game. But also, if the, the Mellow Edit decides, maybe I want to take a more defensive role this game and still be Terra Fairy, but like be something like Assault Vest or something, now all of a sudden Walking Lake is struggling again. Um... I think Low Kicks kind of struggles into Corviknight and Clefable. Kind of, not really Clefable. It can just kind of you turn around, but Corviknight especially. And like Overquill. It's like really, I think this is probably the most dominant matchup we've seen so far. I would give this to Kaborka probably like 75 25, maybe even 80 20. Yeah, no, I think I think this is definitely super like free for Kaborka. They have so many avenues. They can go down. Um, Raging Bolt, Water Pond. Heck, you can even use offensive overquill in rain and just like try to do things. It doesn't look as free that. as other things. Um, yeah, it isn't as free as other things as like Dark Poison isn't like the best type combo to this team, but it is something that you can do. Just SD once in the rain, and then you're hitting basically everything for just super, super hard. And there's not really anything to do about it. The best thing they can do is just like, I don't know, encore you with Grafai Eye. Uh, actually, they can't because Prankster doesn't work on Dark types, so they can't even do that. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, th everything is just screaming Kaborka in this matchup. There's, I mean, there's not very much counterplay that Dallas can use. Like if you get, you know, your your rain up. And then you know you go to one of your rain abusers there's still an ogre pond to just eat any strong water hit for free and there's not much you can do about it and don already went over all the you know the really big points so yeah i'd say this is almost even 90 10 in kaborka's favor it like kaborka just has so much like that they can do but I, I i get it they have so much they can do to shut down dallas i just i don't see how they lose this the only way that i can maybe see is like shell smash with with dreadnought shell smash dreadnought can do so many things i will tell you corviknight 
not a switch in. <laughs> Strong jaw, terror dark, not a switch in. I promise you. Um, there was one more potential win con for Dallas that I noticed, um, and that's Lucario. Like, if it gets to plus two, and if it's like life orb e speed, um, it has the potential to like probably kill a weakened raging bolt, raging bolt, and then kind of just clean up the rest of the team if need be. But it's going to be really hard to position and chip the things that need to be chipped for that to win. Like, I think what would need to happen is Water Pond gets low, which is hard to do, and it's constantly procking Water Absorb. Um, Raging Bolt's going to need to get fairly low. Corviknight's probably going to need to be chipped a little bit. Uh, if Alolan Executor comes, it's going to need to be chipped. Maybe? I don't know. I don't actually know the rules on that. Um, I think that's probably it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Lucario looks pretty good. He's got to position it right. Yeah, but the, the the ways to win are few and far between for Dallas, and I think, Kabor, again, Kaborka just has everything going for him in this matchup that I think it should Kaborka should win this pretty handedly. I will step in and say the odds might be 100 to 0. Dallas might be too scared to even show up to this Kaborka game. <laughs> but, yeah, with that, MIA. <laughs> but with that... But with that... All right, then we move on to Sydney versus Detroit. And um, as per usual, Pult Pagos team looks pretty good. Um, Dragapult, I think, has actually a lot of options um, as a special threat this week. Um, like, you can run Dragon Pulse, it hits, you know, um, Garchomp, then Shadow, uh, Ghost Move. I, I almost said Shadow Move. What in the world am I thinking? I'm tired. Um, Ghost Move to hit Spectrier and, um, Deoxys. And then you can run, like, Flamethrower to hit, uh, Scizor as well. And then you could run either, like, U-Turn or, um... Some other like utility move like wisp or something if you're really worried about garchomp or scissor or tauros or something um or you could just be screens and then go into the turtle or um like gapdos and set up if you really wanted to um but i think that uh sydney's offensive profile looks really really strong into this matchup um and uh, even the defensive backbone with like Tentacruel, AV Tentacruel can help shut down Spectre. Same with Sylveon. Um, I think Deancey is really good here. At, if it like Terra Waters for like, Garchomp, Scizor, um, Volcanion even. Once it Terra Grounds, Draining Kiss is pretty free. Um, I think, and then Landorus also helps with Garchomp and with Scizor. Um, and then Tauros as well. I, I think that Sydney just has so many options here. Um, Detroit also, if it, uh, like, if Spectre gets going, it, Pagos can stop it pretty handedly. Um, so that, that is, that isn't nothing. Um, I think set up Dio Speed could also be really good this week. Um, just nasty plot up and then, like, get the Pagos chipped to where you don't have Terra Shell and then hope you hit a Focus Blast or maybe Superpower can kill it. With enough investment, I doubt it, but it's it, maybe. Um, and then I I think Mandibuzz has some merit in stopping um, like Landorus, but if it, I wonder if Banded Gapdos with like CC or Brave Bird can kill in two. That's something I'd be interested to see. Um, but yeah, I think Sydney has. Uh, a ton of ways to break this team open offensively um a ton of ways to stop what this team wants to do defensively um and i think that uh because of that i think it's probably going to be somewhere in the ballpark of like 60 60 40 or even 65 35 for sydney i think that sydney absolutely has a lot of overwhelmingly strong offensive pieces in this game the first thing that stood out to me was fairy spam just like we talked about in the uh the chicago vs rex game i believe mm -hmm. yeah um sydney has two of two very strong like mid-tier fairies being dnc and sylveon uh if we, if we look at the uh, detroit team the options in resisting fairies are pretty slim you have volcanian which granted 
is a good fairy resist. But if it's if it's AV, that means it's taking rocks chip and it can only do it for so long. There's like no sustainability there whatsoever. Scizor is probably dying to like any two moon blasts that come out ever. Um Bastiodon. Bastiodon is admittedly it's good. It's it's a good fairy resist, but it, it feels like such a liability into the rest of the team that if you that if uh Detroit is feels forced to bring Bastiodon, it's basically a 6v5. And I bet it's like really good for Sydney. Um Spectrier, I think, doesn't look fantastic this game just because Terrapagos exists and Sylveon. I'm sure I can technically hit hit it pretty hard with like Psychic, but it doesn't really matter that honestly, because Terrapagos is very, very good this matchup. It can kind of just bring Star Storm, Earth Power, Dark Pulse, and that's it. That's all it really needs. It hits everything super, or at least neutrally, with uh, that move set. Um, Dragapult feels pretty good. Like like the the special bulk is not great on this team from Detroit, but Mandibuzz is like decent at, at eating Shadow Balls all day long, even if it's like Fizz Def. So it could definitely fill that role, just come in, but then it has to worry about, about like uh, Wisp or T-Bolt or things like, or even Draco, Specs Draco after a certain point. It gets very tough. Uh, Landorus looks really, really good with the only uh, ground resist being Mandibuzz. So uh, if you pull out the patented Gravity Lando tech, it might even be able to, to muscle through Mandibuzz uh, and then just get kill after kill. Gapdos looks like okay here. Actually, it looks really good here because flying resists are literally just um avalug and bastiodon which again i think they're they're both kind of liabilities in this matchup when you need to be muscling as much offense as you can if you're detroit um i think vulcanian honestly is probably better not tearing in this matchup i think i talked about that a little bit i just don't think the terra ground really does that much for it here and you, you can maybe maybe you can find a reason to bring avalug as a terra captain instead or just go no Terra. Like, bringing Volcanian's fine, just I would say you probably don't want to Terra at this, this matchup. Uh, DOSP looks really good. Garchomp looks, like, okay. It's probably going to need to get need to get creative if it wants to beat the combination of, like, Landorus and Sylveon. But, I don't know. I feel like Detroit's team is going to take a lot more thinking to get those threats in and making progress. Whereas Sydney's team just feels a lot more like, oh, obviously I can just, I can just bring this set and it, it does everything against everything it ever needs to so i think i'm gonna give this probably 60 40 to sydney maybe even 55 45 i don't know it, it's tough because detroit i know is a strong coach and has a really crazy roster right now um so i don't know i feel like it's closer than we give it credit for but sydney's options just feel a lot more automatic all right with that next up the bc lit leos and the carolina Titans. go ahead don start us off okay first thought gouging fire uh it goes pretty crazy here between heat crash and earthquake it pretty much beats the whole team like heat, heat crash earthquake and dragon move pretty sure it just beats everything so yeah i just i Carolina the Titans is going to have to get really creative in how they deal with Gouging Fire. Maybe Flash Fire, Air Balloon, Heatran, because that works. Or maybe just Shooka if you're like really trying to be extra careful around it. Um, Samurai to Sui feels not great here between the combination of Treads and Alam Alamola. Sneasler? Sneasler does look pretty good here. You have to be careful around the Rotom Frost with Terra Poison. Because if it Terra Poisons and Wisps you, you're you're kind of in big trouble. Or if it like just Terra Poison and Foul Blaze you with plus two or something, it could get very scary. Rillaboom feels kind of difficult here between the Terra Poison Rotom, the Gouging Fire, and the Tornadus. Um, can Salamence do anything here for Carolina? It might be able to with like Dragon Dance, Earthquake, Iron Head. And then maybe like a specially invested Draco for like Alamola. I don't know. It feels it's it's looks like it's gonna be hard for Carolina to make like progress this game. Whereas BC Litleos can just kind of click moves with a lot of these guys and just break giant holes. 
I think if there's a mod that BC struggles to bring this game, it's probably Gren. Gren's going to struggle against Rillaboom. It's probably going to struggle against maybe like specially defensive to Dunsparce. Um, it's going to struggle against Terra Uxie. I don't know. I just like it's not that Greninja is particularly bad. It's that I think other guys just feel so much better this matchup. Um, Tornadus looks really hard for Carolina to kill, actually. Like, wow, Agia, the more I look at it, the more Tornadus looks impossible to kill. I think because, like, it, it just feels like all of BC's threats are hard. Are they're, either, they're either impossible to kill or impossible to wall. And because of that, I think I'm going to give this to the BC, like, 75-25. Maybe 70-30. The one thing I see on Carolina immediately, there's a Dun Sparse. If y'all have watched some of the Stargazer content that either has come out or is to come out, or just any of the live matches with uh, every Bodhi on Showdown, I believe it's Sada's Chimps. Um, they uh, they have dedunned two people in a row. I think that the Dunsparce can uh, can go crazy this game. Um, I don't know what set will need to run. I mean, agility weakness policy maybe to catch like a body press or like something but uh you know i did dunsparce the stargazer goats have proven that uh it can it can do anything um but i do think that it is mostly in favor of bc um like gouging fire does just kind of click buttons do things um the only things that are going to be problems for gouging are going to be like wheezing um and then Salamence, like, I mean, Salamence with Intimidate is going to be annoying, especially if it keeps pivoting around between that and Weezing. Um, but if you can get rid of Weezing and, like, even Uxie, then, like, Salamence isn't as much of an issue because the things that switch in aren't taking hits over and over again. So, like, yeah, Salamence can switch in and keep intimidating you, but at some point, it's going to be kind of redundant. Um, and then Floor just is, like, kind of a switch into Salamence as well, depending on set and everything. Um, but I think Aloe is probably just more free. Um, but yeah, I think that, uh, the offensive profile for BC into Carolina is, um, probably easier, easier to play with, just clicking buttons, uh, pivoting around, you know, doing, doing things like that. Uh, meanwhile, Carolina is going to have to really position their piece as well and get them into like really good positions once things are chipped and things like that to just come out and then finally just break open that hole and maybe even sweep the whole game so i do think it is easier for bc to win to win the game uh and, and just play it in general so i do think it's probably going to be around that 65 35 or like 70 30 mark um but i think there are outlets for carolina to do things it's just it's a lot easier for bc to do what they want to do and with that I'm on to the final neon game which is the game of the week it is the boston bay bets versus the St. Louis Galios, me, and uh, as to avoid bias, Don, go ahead. Okay, first thing I see, Roaring Moon kind of puts this team in a bag. Uh, I see, I see two knockoff resists, and one of them does not want to come in on a U-turn, and the other is probably getting to it KO'd. So I think Roaring Moon is very, very scary this matchup. The Annihilate looks like okay. I think it's, it's going to struggle with setup, given a lot of the threats that are on this team. Like Gengar is going to be able to, to kill it if it tries to set up. Zapdos can really chunk it, and Polion can phase it out. There's an unaware Crocolore there too, so it's, it's just it's going to be hard for setup Annihilate to be working this week. Um, Glyscore is like okay. It might just kind of be Ursaluna or Bax fodder. Fessendipity is going to be like a decent Zapdos switch in, a decent Cyclozar switch in, Gengar switch in. Basically, just a blanket uh, special wall and pivot. Blastoise, honestly, low key, looks like a, a good sweeper here. Um, the Terra Belly Bolt looks like okay here. I feel like if it were Terra Fairy, maybe it would be a little bit more exciting as a back check. 
Um, but Terra Water's like okay as a Blood Moon check. Oh, I didn't even see there's a Cryogonal there. That probably is like okay into Ursa Luna. It probably takes like 45 from Blood Moon and then it can like try and haze any setup shenanigans. It can freeze dry it. Basically, it just can't stay in. Um, and it also, uh, it kind of blanks a lot of Bax's, a lot of what Bax wants to do. Like it, it can, it can eat an ice move. It can, uh, it can stop Earthquake. You kind of struggle clicking a dragon move, especially if your choice when Jirachi and Pheasantipity exist. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I think right now, from what I'm seeing, it looks very, very close, very even. Blood Moon, I think, is probably Blood Moon and Bax are the biggest threats into into Boston for sure. Um, the Blood Moon answer, I think, it probably has to try to be Cryo, or it has to be like some super weird Fez or something, or like some super weird Belly Blue, uh, or like maybe like Common Rune. I don't know. Bax feels less possible to check, but also it can be out muscled. Like it can be out offensed pretty easily here like like a a scarf uh offensive roaring moon maybe like scarf nihilate basically if you do the the offensive pressure bax is not gonna have a chance to do anything this matchup but if it does get set up it's almost over if that makes any sense um gengar looks really nice there's not really a conventional ghost resist that wants to be coming in moon can come in but it uh, i'm pretty sure gengar gets dazzling gleam so it, it can't safely come in um Raven's also going to have to play around Destiny Bonds from Gengar, for sure. It's not something you can just freely KO like that. Uh, the Empoleon is, like, kind of annoying. Because whenever it comes in on something, like, it, it comes in on Frez so unbelievably freely that it just makes it really hard for um, for Raven to punish without just constantly clicking U-turn with Fez until the Empoleon's dead. So, on honestly, I feel like this is probably the the closest matchup we've seen in Neon all week. I, I would probably give this a 50-50 straight up. All right. And with that, that's Neon Pick'ems, week four. Uh, yeah. Have a good one, everybody.